cast shadow. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we enter into these Easter mysteries, we call to mind our sins, asking God's pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, by your passion, death, and resurrection, you have opened for us the gates of paradise. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, 
raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of, sin, of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil shall befall me. For you are with me, your rod and your staff will give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, 
because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john Glory to you, o lord jesus said amen amen i say to you whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber but whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Do you hear the voice of the Good Shepherd? The Lord says that his sheep will hear his voice and not follow a stranger's voice. So do you hear his voice? I think we are very blessed to be known as Holy Spirit Parish because it's in the Holy Spirit that we hear the voice of our Savior. Take, for example, Peter. In the Gospel, Peter is impetuous. He's slow to understand. At one point, Christ even calls him Satan, get behind me. Peter denies the Lord. He is cowardly. He talks a good game. I will defend you with my life. But when the test comes, he fails. 
But in the readings today, in the Acts of the Apostles, and in Peter's epistle, we find a different person altogether. He is articulate, he is wise, he's bold, he's daring, he's fearless. Why and how? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he becomes a new person. And he responds to the prompting of the Spirit. He continues to hear the voice of his Savior even more clearly after the resurrection. Consider Joseph and Mary, the beginning of this very month of May. On the 1st, the bishops rededicated our country to the Blessed Mother. And it was on the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. Both of them heard the voice of God calling them to what was unexpected. They couldn't imagine what God wanted them to do with their lives. But it's through the Holy Spirit that they listened. And not only listened, but responded. You may hear the voice of God more than you realize. Yesterday, at St. Camillus Parish, the, well, the church, in the parking lot, people heard the voice of Christ calling them to repentance, to let go of their sinfulness, to receive the gift of forgiveness and the sacrament of reconciliation. They heard the voice of the Lord and it prompted them to come, to drive over there and to receive that sacrament. After my time there, I drove over to St. Joe the Worker site. And there I saw people who heard the voice of Christ prompting them to drop off canned goods and unperishable food items for those in need. Other folks heard the Lord's voice prompting them to come and have their needs met through his generosity. And they humbly came and took food. And a whole other group of women were there who volunteered their time to sort and pack and make available to those in need the food. They heard the voice of God prompting them to serve. Do you hear the voice of the Lord? During this time, there are so many obstacles removed. This time of distancing and being quiet from jobs and no sports going on. We really have an optimal time to pay more attention to the voice of the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. This very weekend and last weekend, we would have had all of our children for First Holy Communion. But unfortunately, we cannot do that. Fortunately, though, we have this time for you, you little ones, and your parents and your families to grow even more desiring of the gift of this sacrament so that when you are able to receive him, it'll mean so much more because we've had to wait. I have a very good friend. He calls practically every day. We talk very briefly, just checking in. What are you up to? What are you doing? And then one day, he called, and I said, well, how are you doing, Mike? And he said, well, I haven't really done much today. And I said, well, I can't believe that. Because if you know Mike, he's always busy. He's always doing something. He can't sit still. He's got ants in his pants. He's always running around doing something. So I said, I can't believe you didn't do anything today. And he said, well... And then he gives me this whole list of things. I rode my bike. I fixed the leaky faucet. I had the dishwasher repaired. I did it myself. And blah, blah, blah. He gives me this whole list of things. I said, what do you mean you didn't do anything today? And he says, well, I didn't help anybody. I didn't help anybody. And if you know Mike Weesey, he is always helping somebody. To a fault. He's always helping somebody. In fact, 
I know of one time he saw a woman who had something on the top of her car. I don't recall exactly what it was, but it wasn't on there correctly, and it was going to fall off, and he saw an accident about to happen. So he stops this woman, and he says, you know, this is going to fall off your Let me fix it for you. That's the kind of guy he is. So he goes to fix this, and the bungee cord let go because it wasn't on correctly, and it flies back and it hits him in the eye. Now he could have lost sight in his eye, but thank God he didn't. But he did have permanent damage to that eye. And the muscle that opens and closes his pupil is paralyzed, and it doesn't move anymore. But in these few years that's passed since this happened, I have never heard Mike, not even once, complain about the permanent suffering he has as a result of stopping to help that woman. And there are many, many other examples of him and others I know who hear the voice of Christ prompting them to serve to be there for others. And that's how Jesus in the gospel is able to do what he says. Feed his sheep. Care for those in need. Be people who seek to serve and not be served. That's a dividing line between true leadership. And that's what we need more of today. Not only in our church, in our families, in our community, in our country, in our world, are people who aren't out for themselves, as Jesus describes, those shepherds who work for pay, the thieves and the marauders, but those who are willing to follow the promptings of the good shepherd and lay down their will themselves for the sake of others. We have a perfect opportunity during this time of quiet, which isn't going to last much longer. This freedom we have from all the noise, and yet we're prompted to go try to find more noise. Let's watch an old Super Bowl. Let's do this. Let's take the time that we have to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and hear the voice of Jesus calling you to deeper faith and action. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life to the world to come. Amen. Lord Jesus, we beg you to send forth your Holy Spirit into our minds and hearts and very souls that we might hear your voice calling us to service as we place before you our cares and concerns. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may God bless him with continued health, vitality, and wisdom in his ministry, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Jesus' example of servant leadership assist them in their efforts in solving the most difficult challenges in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may our hearts be opened by the promptings of the Holy Spirit to hear Jesus' call to serve one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our RCIA program and all of our first holy communicants, as they await the day to fully partake in the sacramental life of the church, that their hearts will continue to grow stronger in their faith and their love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of believers, may God help us grow in being emissaries of comfort and peace to all those we encounter today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, for members of our families, friends, and benefactors, for all who will die this day, and we remember especially the deceased members of our parish and families, that they may now come to share in the eternal banquet of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now to add our own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now conclude by praying together our parish prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, you told us, us where your treasure is, is there, there your heart, heart is also. Is also. The, parish the parish of Holy Spirit, Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and to build in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom, give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary our mother, pray for us. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that we ourselves and these gifts we offer be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that, renewed constantly by your work within us, they may be the cause of unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, yet to praise you more gloriously through Christ our Passover, who has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life. The halls of heaven's kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from the dead, and his rising to new life, we rise also. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts with your praise, even heavenly powers and angelic hosts, 
sing together an unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness, and set us over the whole world to serve you, our Creator, and to rule over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped all to seek and find you. Again and again you offered covenants, and through the prophets taught us the hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live, no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and to bring us the fullness of joy. Therefore, Holy Father, we ask by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought for your consecration so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his Father most holy, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and Gideon gave you thanks, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we recall Christ's death, his descent to the realm of the dead, we proclaim his resurrection and ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness all who partake of this one bread and one chalice may be gathered by the Holy Spirit into one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of your praise. Therefore, Lord, remember now all those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy, those who partake in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, 
and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Joseph, your apostles and martyrs, and all the saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we too will glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We dare to pray in the words of our Savior, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. And we make our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And 
And just a word to our little ones. At the end of every Mass, we always bless our little ones who haven't yet received First Holy Communion. And I'm mindful of this whole sea of little ones who are longing to receive First Holy Communion and would have yes, last Sunday and this Sunday. And so I'd ask a special blessing upon all of you so you know we haven't forgot you and we long to see your smiling faces very soon. Lord, bless your children. You who said, let the children come to me. May you draw them ever closer to you. And during these days, as they long await the reception of your body and blood, so may you protect them and draw them ever closer to you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It'll be a glorious time. And it's just around the corner. Let us pray. <clears throat> Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.